This segment is sponsored by Our Home Magazine. Prepare to be absolutely dazzled. We are joined by a very talented artist this morning. She's featured in the current issue of Our Home Magazine, Nastasia Swift. She works in an unusual medium, but I guess, Nastasia, it's pretty normal to you. You work with wool yeah. and fiber felting. This is incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I stumbled across felting while my undergraduate degree at VCU. And I think immediately once my fingers started working with the needle and the wool, I was like, this is for me. And it's just been almost seven years now. And I'm still kind of going strong with that material. A, a moment of discovery led to a whole lifetime here of work so far. I'm sure that will continue to evolve. But you also work in paint and print. So mm -hmm. I would imagine as an artist, it's really tricky and yet incredible to balance all of those things coming together mm -hmm. as you are kind of currently working in, in fiber. Yeah, for me, well, so I haven't painted, I don't do a lot of painting right now. Sometimes I'll kind of tap into it, but I think the beautiful thing about working in multiple mediums is if I get tired or like I'm losing creative energy in one area, I know that I can kind of swoop into another. And then the possibility of blending those three things whenever I want, whether I'm painting on wool or felting something within a painting or figuring out printing on those materials, it's like this never ending excitement of these mediums that I work with. You're wearing one of your creations. Your creations are okay. featured in many different collections, including Quirk and Charlottesville and several very notable museums. How did you get inspired when you did first take this up? And, and what are you most inspired by that, that drives your creations forward? I, so my paintings have always been figurative and just before getting into felting, I think that I was always interested in sculpture and working three dimensionally. And somehow I just couldn't see my figurative work translating in a three dimensional form with the materials that I was familiar of or knew or knew of and learning felting. It was a way of transitioning the figure into a three-dimensional form. And if you can see all these beautiful dolls behind me, um, those are my mother's porcelain dolls and she's been collecting them since her early 20s. So that's all of my life. Um, so I've grown up around these little objects and I think that they play a very major part in my interest in working with objects and figurative objects. Um, but also she was an artist um, in her younger years and she doesn't practice anymore, but growing up and looking through her portfolio, which I tell this story to everyone all the time because I think it's a beautiful story, <laughs> but growing up and getting to play and look through her, her portfolio and doing like these at home in the kitchen drawing sessions um, kind of jump started this creative energy and, and thinking of the value of art. You know, these dolls behind me, I still don't touch. <laughs> Um, so understanding that they were very different from my dolls and understanding that her portfolio could only be, be viewed with her, that that was like my first gallery and first museum was sitting on the floor and looking through her drawings. So like understanding that value and um, representation at home, it just all of those things I think are the foundation in terms of inspiration for my work. And then that those inspirations kind of jump off into other things, whether it's something I'm reading, a conversation I have with a stranger. Um, I think I pull lots into my creative bubble of working. In a way, it goes, it goes to that, um, that sort of old adage that you never know where inspiration may strike. For you, it was the dolls, and they were always there. Absolutely. And so that formed, formed those moments of creation down the line. Specifically, your work now in the felting uh, speaks to womanhood, blackness, and history. These are very mm -hmm. important themes in your work. Yeah. Um, and I think just being a woman growing up around black women, um, there are these very specific stories and histories and experiences tied within myself and my family. And like you said, I mean, I never know when I'm going to tap into any of those things. Um, sometimes it's meeting a complete stranger. I had a conversation um, last summer that completely sparked the piece that's actually in the magazine, um, I Wanted to Give You the Ocean. I had no idea I was going to meet this woman and she was going to share this very specific story with me. And speaking with her, I was like, I have to do something with this. 
Um, so you just like, I never know when they're going to come in into like these ideas or conversations are going to come into, um, my frame or my way of working. Um, but I think in terms of history and womanhood, like that's a thing that I'm living. So it's very easy to be inspired by it. Um, and it's a thing that I'm witnessing being lived, whether it's a friend or a family member and being able to pull what I need to from those themes to kind of illustrate my own larger theme is, is I would say kind of how I work through a lot of the concepts of my work. And as an artist, when you have these encounters or these moments of inspiration, I think it comes through in your work as part of that conversation, almost as, as working it through and part of the narrative in some way. Yeah, absolutely. I think I like to, I feel like maybe all artists consider themselves as storytellers, but I think that when I interact with these real life occurrences, I find myself illustrating my own version of them um, and becoming a narrator. Sometimes I place myself as a character within the narration. Um, so the sculpture of that little girl, although I'm imagining what a mother would do in a very specific situation, I'm almost placing myself as the mother in that narration and then providing this setting for this sculpture to exist in. In addition to being featured in this current issue of Our Home Magazine, which everybody should pick up and learn more about you, you have been named of one of 40 Virginia artists in a jury selection to receive a grant from the VMFA. This is incredible. The Virginia Visual Artist Emergency Relief Fellowship Program. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, um, it's been an interesting time for everyone. Um, and I can only speak for myself as an artist but much of the work we do, um, it, it, for a lot of us, it was cer certainly canceled, but it's been tricky to understand how to do that virtually, um, whether it's public speaking or teaching a workshop. Um, so these organizations and institutions that have come together to support anyone, but in my case, artists, has just been super appreciative and almost kind of lifts a little weight off of your shoulders. Um, so I know quite a few of the artists who were selected and it's always an honor to be in company with people that you admire and whose work you respect and who you respect as an artist. Um, so just such a great, such a great milestone. It's nice to be able to continue to do these things in, in a weird time because in March I had no idea what was to come for the next couple months. I think we all feel that way. Um, yeah. But it's nice to still be able to accomplish things in, in such strange, strange times. Well, and be recognized for the incredible work that you're doing. I'm yeah. so glad that we had the chance to talk with you. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Absolutely. And we'll be sure to share information so that everybody can learn more about your work and then pick up uh, Our Home Magazine so they can learn more about the featured article there. Thank you again. Thank you. Absolutely. We know you want some more information on Natasha Swift. Visit Natasha Swift. Dot com. You can find our home magazine on newsstands today or subscribe at richmondmagazine.com slash home. You'll find them on Facebook at Our Home Magazine and on Instagram at Our Home Mag. Jess, you know, um, I miss having those kind of people in the studio and watching them do their thing. But that was, <clears throat> that interview was what this show is all about, I think because we all fell in love with this wonderful young lady and the art uh, and her just, I mean, the light from Insider was just coming out on the TV screen. That was amazing. I, I am just fascinated by the whole story there. I mean, from, from mom's dolls to what she does to everything. I agree. When, when I sat down to do the interview just yesterday, uh, Bill, the 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 everything fired up she she came on and i thought i had, i'd read her resume natasha has this incredible resume right or or just a list of accomplishments so far that i expected to interact with an artist who was much further along in her career right yeah. she's she's as fresh as the day is long and came on and has this incredible resume and is doing all these amazing things and this life and energy. 
And that clearly comes out in what she's creating. And I love when it came on, she had all the dolls behind her. She'd really thought out where she wanted to have the interview, you know, mom's yeah. dolls that had inspired her. And I thought, how neat is that? You never know where that moment of inspiration will come from. And yet here it is all those years later impacting her work. And she said, you know, when she started picking up the needles and started going, she was instantly knew that's it. And that's, you know, a, a light bulb went off and away she goes. And man, that was, just, I was, I was sitting just staring at the screen the whole time she was on, just fascinated by the whole thing. Uh, I would say we wish her luck, but she doesn't need luck. That girl's got it going, man. <laughs> that was amazing. I, I was really impressed by her. Natasha, just remember stuff, us, remember us and check in with us, please, because yeah. <laughs> we want to keep keep uh, keep on uh, tabs of what you're up to. And it's funny, Bill, I was the same way. Talk about behind the scenes. We started talking and then I remembered we were doing an interview and it was almost <laughs> 10 minutes later. And I thought, oh, I have to, oh. I got to wrap things up. We've, we've, we, you know, I'd love to talk all day, but <laughs> yeah. We could have the we Natasha have. show. We could have. The Natasha That's hour. Right. It could have happened. She, she <clears throat> this hour's delightful. not over with, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.